Hello YouTube, this is Bowtide Media. I'm going a little more casual for this video today because we've got Hot Takes Episode 2. I've got my Mont Sket sticker on the back of my phone and let's get into it. I think there's a chance that Instinct and Silk and their artists would be more successful if they weren't separate labels. I can understand that they're different styles and genres, but a Monster Cat is already a multi-genre label. Uh, first of all, they are not different labels. It's all Monster Cat. It is all all Monster Cat. It's not different labels. And, uh, you know, I disagree. I think we see a lot on YouTube nowadays that the view counts are going down on all the channels, uh, but specifically on Instinct and Silk, I would say, just because they don't have the following that they haven't been around for 10 years on YouTube. But I, I, that's just not where most of the plays are right now. Even Darlington just said uh, in another, I can't remember where it was, that they hit the all-time high for Spotify plays um, recently. And so I just, I just don't, I just don't think it's true. I don't think it's true. The Knight was one of the best artists on Monster Cat ever, and I deeply miss them. Uh, okay, I didn't they only put out like two songs? So how can they be the best artist on Monster Cat ever if they only put out like two songs? Even if those two songs are like 10 out of 10s, if you've got an artist that has like 20 songs, but most of them are like eights, I would totally say that that artist is better, a better Monster Cat artist than The Knight was. Uh, their stuff wasn't even that great in my opinion. Topi being shunned by the Monster Cat community is a tra- shunned by the Monster Cat community is a tragedy? He's easy one of the most underrated producers right now with an incredibly unique style and he could have been way bigger if his Monster Cat stuff took off. Um, shunned? Who- who says Topi is shunned or Toppy? That what? Everyone I know that says that they freaking love him. I feel like I'm in the minority of people that don't necessarily love his stuff. W what? I feel like he's- no. Uh, also, I think his just style of production and what he goes for is just so experimental sometimes that he's not going to have that viewership. He's not going to have that listenership. And he just, to the, due to the nature of what he produces. And that's sad, but I think that's just the case here. The 10 year anniversary album should have had only veterans, no newcomers. Seeing people like Ellis and New Aspect on it is just weird. So, I mean, it's a 10 year anniversary album celebration. So are we just not going to celebrate the last three years then? You know what I mean? Like, I get I get that New Aspect is on it, and I understand that kind of thing, but Ellis, like, Ellis was a big name in Monster Cat pretty recently, so are we just gonna ignore the last year of the 10 year anniversary? No, no we aren't. If you can find enjoyment from Stick Up by Karma Fields Morden and Juliet Lewis, you are an insane person. Easily the worst vocal performance in any song I've ever heard and off label. That is, that is a violent reaction to that song. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I hated it when it first came out, I thought it was super weird, but going back and listening to it a little bit more times, I recognize the kind of, the simple, not even simple, the odd experimental beauty of it and how just disturbing it was and strange, but I mean, I like the production more than anything on that song, uh, but I think to say that you are insane for finding any enjoyment is... A uh, pretty harsh statement. When it comes to mainstream music, the Monster Cat community is really toxic. Like, why is everything that gets recognition bad? How does popularity make a song bad? But I actually see a lot of people in the community who say things like, you listen to mainstream music? That's kind of cringe, bro, not gonna lie. Not listening to mainstream music uh, because it is mainstream is cringe. But I guess I'm just happy that I found this awesome label and should care less about other people's decisions in life. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna agree with you here. I'm, I am gonna agree with you here. Um, there's a, a next question will be about marshmallows alone, so we'll get to that. But, um, yeah, I mean, generally though, I would say that the mainstream music or music made for commercial success isn't as good. Uh, in just my opinion, I think more often than not, or on average, those songs aren't as good or well produced or well thought out as much as the kind of more indie or niche -er stuff, because I think that's just the nature of what they're trying to, they're trying to make song for more appeal and Monster Cat has aimed in on us specifically who have this exact style of music preference and taste. And so I uh, I, I understand it and I, and I agree with you though, especially on the fact that people are just like, oh, it's mainstream, it sucks. Like this is just awful. And I think we need to get out of that mindset. Like um, I just did this week in EDM and there was uh, a DJ Snake song that we were listening to. Um, and I was actually really proud of the community of the people watching the video because DJ Snake, uh, it was Rick Ross and Rich Ryan were all big names. And uh, going into it, I, I honestly had a little lower expectations, but it was kind of a banger. And I think a lot of people agreed with me. And so I was happy that we were all just like, oh wow, this is actually just good because it's good. Not just because it's bad because it's mainstream. But uh, I, I do understand what you're saying. Okay, so to that point, uh, Marshmallows Alone is actually a pretty cool track and wouldn't have gotten even half of the hate if it had gotten like a million views. I agree with you. I agree with you. 
I agree with you. I think if it didn't get as big or if Marshmello wouldn't wasn't as big as he is today, I think the song would have been relatively forgotten. Just like an odd song. It I don't know if it would even would have got a remix package. I think it would have just been like a meh song and just been like a, okay like this is here it's not that bad but because it got so popular i think a lot of people were like no this is the worst this is so bad and so uh those two points i think are, are good points newer monster artists are having a hard time starting in the label because of the seemingly elevated bar that's been set to the label's tracks nowadays even i'm a victim to this some new artists that should have uh, that should hit don't take the cake for me anymore um i mean is this a bad thing like, it sucks that uh, that more people aren't getting onto label, but don't we want that? Don't we want a higher level of quality for the label and for the songs that we're getting? Like, Monster Cat, I think, has the pleasure of being able to be so picky with the songs and artists they choose to highlight and, uh, I guess, sign to the label. Like... Uh, we want more quality, so I don't know why this is a bad thing. I mean, and if you're a newer artist having a hard time, then I hate to say it, but like, make better music. It'll take time and maybe don't start with Monster Cat then because Monster Cat used to be the smaller label that had small artists on it and now it's grown to be something larger than it is or larger than it was before. And so maybe just start at the smaller labels this time and then work your way up to Monster Cat. Before Monster Cat used to be the step in the door and now it's not, so. I think that's a great thing. The nine year anniversary comp was more memorable than both the eight year and the 10 year anniversary. What the, the nine year was the nineties? What? No, no, what? Okay, first of all, I thought the eight year was a little more forgettable than the nine year, uh, but in, just because of what they did, like the eight year was actual new songs and the nine year was like 90 stuff. So I remembered that more, but um, I, I don't think anyone really loved the songs on the nineties one. I think like Better Off Alone and Children were like the best two on that. And other than that, it was, it was, just meh, but um, okay. Monster Cat YouTube thumbnails are ugly. Uh, this one's tough uh, because I think a lot of my own thumbnails are, are pretty garbage too, not gonna lie. I think some of them are, are not good and some of them I'm like, oh, this is great. I love this kind of style. Like for example, these hot takes videos, I, I like the, the style of thumbnail I do for these ones. But when it comes to like uh, the This Week in EDM or something like that, I'm like, ah, these kind of suck. And so uh, it, it just, I mean, it's design, um, but I semi agree with you here. It's kind of tough. Uh, they have to show so much. They have to show the artist, the song title, the uh, artist artwork, I should say, and then the Monster Cat Instinct or Uncaged on the thing, and then show the actual label. And it's, there's just so much going on. And I do agree. I do think the kind of jagged corners are okay, um, but I don't think they're, I don't think they're ugly. I, I just think they're okay. They do their job. Coven never has and never will make anything above meh. This is just ignorance. Or even, is that even the right word? This is just, uh, to say that they're never gonna make a good song is just so bad, honestly. Like, are you just gonna wipe away every, going into the song, you're just gonna listen to a new song and there's gonna be like, absolutely, it's never gonna be good. Never gonna be good just because the artist. Like, that is just, like, like, Try to take the opposite mindset. If you don't love Coven, if you don't love another artist, be like, maybe they'll surprise me this time. Maybe I'll like this one this time. Maybe I'll do this this time. And you don't have to listen to them, but um, to say that, to blanket, make a blanket statement that an artist will never make anything above a certain caliber is just, it's that's just bad. Cloud Nun's music should be on Monster Cat Silk. Uh, I disagree. I think Cloud Nun's music is a, a little more uh, engaging than I think Silk is. Silk really does feel like background music to me specifically, I would say. Uh, that doesn't feel like there's really a whole ton going on and there's not um, a real big beat to it or drive or something like that. And I think Cloud Nun has that and uh, has like those deeper levels and it's a lot more dynamic than the Silk tracks are. And so uh, I, I don't think so. Maybe a few songs could, would go on Silk, but um, I think Cloud Nun's better on Instinct. Boss Bite is a very well known artist outside of Monster Cat. Most people know him for his chip tune on Newgrounds that he published until 2015-ish. Uh, the people that liked and possibly grew up with that pre-Monster Cat Boss Fight era, they want their favorite artists to do good, so they can't accept uh, some of his Monster Cat stuff doesn't quite make the cut. Uh, huh. This is a, a very interesting take. Um, not gonna lie, before, uh, not before prepping this video, I did not know that Boss Fight did chiptune stuff on Newgrounds. Uh, so, I mean, this doesn't apply to me necessarily. And uh, I, I think, I mean... I, obviously this is all personal opinion and so many of these hot takes are personal opinion, but I don't think boss fight stuff is like awful. And so if he's going from chip tune to like these kind of banger pseudo rock song metal elements, I mean like, 
uh, good for him. And uh, I think the songs are, are not bad. I don't think they're awful by any means. Stone Bank in 2020 was pretty bad. I don't really like Hardstyle, and the only good track from him this year, in my opinion, was What Are You Waiting For, VIP. 2019 Stone Bank was amazing, and his Life and Death EP is one of my favorite EPs because it doesn't have any bad songs. I'd rather have Stone Bank as complex or one trick pony, uh, but his diversity is admirable, I guess. Uh, interesting, and kind of a couple things in here. Um, you know what, though? I would genuinely, or not genuinely, I would um, generally agree with this to some extent. I just feel like Stonebank doesn't pack the punch that he did as much uh, in the last maybe 2021, 2020, as much as uh, he would have in the past. Like before when like, oh, I don't know, like even like Stronger was coming out, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for new Stonebank. This stuff's going to be amazing. And I see it, I'm like, yes. Nowadays, I'm just like, oh, the new Stonebank track. Um, I, di I did like a lot of his new stuff this year, like Take Me Away and uh, Strength Unknown, but I wasn't as on fire for his, his newer stuff as I used to be in the past. But, um, who knows? The current Monster Cat artist lineup severely lacks any forward-thinking artists. There are, of course, some songs that are bangers and songs that are just phenomenal and artists that push their sound. But in terms of strictly forward-thinking artists, they try to push the electronic scene forward and push ideas that no one else would do. Monster Cat lacks. The only instance in recent memory is Tynan's rocking and Tynan isn't a mainstay on the label. Uh, hmm. This is an interesting take for, I think, the reason that uh, what really is forward thinking in terms of it's so hard to quantify what forward thinking artists or forward thinking sounds really sound like. Um, and I would agree. I think Tiny Rockin is kind of similar to that, but, uh, like just, we don't really know what the future of music is going to sound like. And so, uh, is Grant's new style of kind of more poppy future bass, is that actually forward thinking because that's the way that the industry is going? Or is it this kind of, uh, crazy, almost rhythm style dubstep that like, I don't know, Topi or um, uh, Tynan are doing nowadays that are forward thinking. So really, what is forward thinking? And so, uh, you know, I, I always think Monster Cat's been on a good uh, trend. They've always been kind of knowing what to do and, and increase their, their girth in the uh, EDM community or in the music industry just in general. And so uh, I, uh, I, I disagree. I think Monster Cat's got some uh, got some forward-thinking artists out there, and I think uh, I think the label as a whole is uh, is is they're progressive. Is that the right word? That they're uh, I don't think they'll ever be left behind. Uh, but who knows? We'll have to see in the future. Tony Romero makes some of the most fun and creative house music the label has seen in a long time. I feel like a lot of people don't like his stuff because of him starting the new house wave with loads of artists making house starting around 2019. But I think Tony Romero is among the best uh, come of this. Uh, and always get excited, and I always get excited when he releases a new track. Um, then, yeah, you're you're a fan of Tony Romero. If you make this <laughs> claim, you are a fan of Tony Romero. And, uh, I mean, his stuff is fun and creative, I would say, but to some extent it's a little too odd for me, and I think it's too odd for a majority of people, actually, that listen to Monster Cat. I Just hearing the, the murmurs and talks about Tony Romero is that the stuff just kind of like, it's odd and strange, and uh, maybe it's forward thinking. The idea of Silk is contradictory to Monster Cat. Monster Cat has always been very engaging and experimental, maybe even too hectic for a lot of folks. But Silk is supposed to be polar opposite, having very uniform low-key energy songs. Silk doesn't fit the core idea of Monster Cat. Huh. This is a very interesting final take to say for the day. Um, this is interesting because I would say that Monster Cat, uh, they're... Their whole reason for being, I think, was, or at least early on in the days, was to uh, make creative, good, uh, like, niche EDM music, if that makes sense, and lift up the lower artists. And I think that was so much of what their calling was of a label, or some, uh, whatever, how you ever want to word it, was to lift up those lower uh, recognized artists to be something more and to have this great community. And so, I mean, I think Silk matches that pretty well. I don't love the quality sometimes of what Silk is producing, and it's just not my flavor of music. Uh, but in terms of them, like, they're they're all smaller artists for the most part that are making songs that aren't super popular. And so, like, that's, that's OG Monster Cat. That's what they were doing at the very beginning. And so... Um, I, I have to hard disagree with you here. I don't think it is contradictory to Monster Cat. I think it very much aligns with their ideology and why they were created as a business. But that's been it for Hot Takes Episode 2. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've got an Episode 3 coming out sometime later. I'm not sure when yet. About the same 
questions that I just asked for these ones. And so I've split them in half of, of episode two and three. So no need to bother about asking some more hot takes because episode three will have a whole bunch of takes. And if yours weren't in this one, maybe they will be in episode three. Who knows? But other than that, I have been Bowtie Media and I will see you guys in another video.